Welcome to another Rust custom map editing tutorial. 1.6 has dropped, and here's an update on some of the new features. Note that the program will install to your program files directory and should be launched as administrator. The default directory is c colon slash program files x86 slash rust edit. Inside there you will find the usual launcher. Simply right click and select run as administrator. Moving forward onto one of the first new features, all of the little white artifacts previously seen in older versions of the editor have now been replaced with their actual LODs and are looking rather nice. Note, to get all of these to function correctly and avoid any not loading, select any graphic setting higher than lowest when launching the editor. Show Hierarchy, which lists all of the prefabs in the map. You can access this by selecting View and checking the Show Hierarchy box. Prefab search now located at the top of the prefabs list for all of your prefab needs. We have some advanced terrain tool options. Export raw height map which allows you to export the current terrain height map. Add and subtract terrain height to the terrain without ruining the height map. You can do this by either entering a positive or negative value and hitting apply. Presetting tool panels can now be done in the editor via the view menu and selecting reset tool panels. Here you can either reset them all or individually. To get started with your first river, simply select river tools, create new river. Now we have a new window called river tools. We have some options to add nodes at the start or at the end. We can adjust the width of the river, padding and the art of fade. Try not to mess with these too much uh, if you're committing the river to a live map or something you've been working on for a long time without saving uh, as they may produce some undesired results. Moving forward, we have two little nodes here, node 0 and node 1. You can manipulate these in the same way you would any prefab. My preferred way is to simply click in the center of the gizmo and it will align it to the terrain no matter where I have it. Okay, moving forward, we're going to start by stretching out the distance between node 0 and node, node 1. And we're going to select both nodes by holding control and selecting. Then I'm going to raise them up until the blue line is visible. And now we're going to add nodes the fast way. Instead of clicking add node at start and readjusting its position, we are simply going to double click on the blue line to add nodes where we want them. This is probably the fastest way I've seen to add nodes to a river path in this current version of the editor. Bear in mind that it's a good idea to start at node 0 and add your nodes all the way out. Uh, one thing I noticed is that I started trying to keep it even by adding a node here and then here and then here and then here and it added them sequentially so node 0, node 1, node 2, node 3, node 4, node 5, node 6, node 7, and so on. And when I went to manipulate each point, it was a clusterfuck. So best to start and do it numerically from 0 and head up. Moving on, once you're happy with the amount of nodes you have, simply choose where you would like your river to be. You can elevate it out of the ground, it's fine when you click the Apply Terrain Modifiers button. It will raise the terrain up to your river and everything will look lovely. I'm just going to move these around a little bit to make it a little bit curvy. Once again, by moving them left and right, you can add curvatures to your river. The more points you add or more nodes you add along the length of your river, the more detailed you'll be able to make it. Once you're happy with your little river, simply click Apply Terrain Modifiers, Apply Splat Modifiers, Apply Topology Modifiers. This is optional, but I suggest you add it because it really adds to the immersion of having a river and it's add sound emitters. And when you get close, you'll hear the river sound. That's wonderful. Once you're happy with your river, click Finish Editing. Everything will deselect and you'll have this lovely little river in the editor. Next up is Road Tools. Simply click Road Tools, 
a new window called Road Tools will pop up. Select Create New Path. Once again, we have Add Node at Start and at End. We have two new options, Cap Road Start, Cap Road End. And what they do is if we have our road stretched out like this and they are selected, it will not be a dead end of a road. It'll be a nice curvy broken up road end and road start. And if we uncheck them, it, the road would end suddenly and sharply, which could be very useful for connecting it up to road prefabs found in the content files. So keep that in mind as a useful feature. We have the same width and padding uh, tools and options, which come with their same uh, potential bugginess if you modify them too much. So once again, experiment with at your own risk. Same buttons apply here. We don't have a sound emitter for roads because they don't make sound. Uh, pretty much the same way as well to uh, get your first road started up is to select both points, raise them up until you can see the blue line. Oops, I've added another point in here, but it's okay. And double click. But we're going to move point one all the way up to zero because I don't trust it. As I said before, adding them, it adds them numerically where you click, not in order in the line that they are sitting. So bear that in mind, and it can get very messy. Confused the hell out of me when it happened. All right. Here we go. Some sort of curvy road thing happening. I'll raise these last three nodes out of the ground so you can see how that behaves. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to click Apply Terrain Modifiers. As you can see, the terrain was raised up to the base of the road. Splat Modifiers does the texture, which in this case is gravel. And I believe it is gravel because it looks black on the map when you press G. So everything will look lovely after you've done that. No need to go around and hand paint over the top of them, unless you wish them to be wider or skinnier or don't want them at all. Up to you. Topology, roadside, and road. Road will block any nodes or trees or any of that unwanted stuff spawning on the roads themselves, so it's quite handy. Good to leave there. Lastly, finish editing. Everything deselects. Let's go have a look in game, guys. Here we are in game. As you can see, lovely road. And in a few seconds, a lovely river. Thanks once again for watching my tutorials, guys. I hope this one helped you. Uh, please, uh, Keep an eye out for some new tutorials I've got in the making, uh, advanced techniques to create more immersive maps and whatnot. Uh, check out the links in the bottom of the uh, video, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And uh, thanks for watching. Peace out, guys. Enjoy your map making.